Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we've got some really awesome news. Axonos comes out with the MI2 AnyBuilds A320 V2 is out with Sim Update 15 now released as well as a new 787 and a really awesome promotion from Pimax. So stick around. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining us on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future releases that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. All right, so first off, guys, with the news videos, as always, there are chapters and links to everything down below for the specific section you want to check out. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, the Mil MI2 from Exonos is on its way to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, when I say on its way, I merely mean that it's being developed. The MI2 is a lightweight uh, helicopter. It was used very commonly as a utility helicopter, but it's been used in both military and civilian applications. Um, it's kind of an ugly bird, okay? And I recommend you guys take a look at it. If you guys haven't uh, looked one up before, look up the MI2 helicopter. It's definitely an ugly little thing, but at the same token, it was incredibly um, heavily produced, if you will. I believe over 5,000 of these helicopters were made um, only, only to have production stopped in 1999, but it's still being used all over the world today. Again, it has been used in both military and civilian applications, everything from cargo transport, police operations, such as uh, or as well as uh, medical evac and things like that. So it's a very, very capable helicopter. Its NATO nickname was the Hoplite or is the Hoplite helicopter. Um, it is the smaller version of, I believe, the MI-8, uh, the Magnificent 8, which is a very, very large transport helicopter. Not quite as big as the, for example, the Chinook, but uh, I believe right around the same purposes in development. Um, so very, very cool little helicopter. It's going to be a really awesome addition. Um, I personally am loving seeing more helicopters. I think we still need more in the sim. It's very nice to see that we have gotten quite the collection, but the more the merrier. I love helicopters. I wouldn't necessarily consider myself a rotor head, but it's definitely nice to step away from fixed wing and get into the rotors. If you guys haven't, I would definitely recommend if you are getting into helicopters or helicopter simulation, get a collective, whether it be from Verpal or anybody else. Uh, I personally love the Verpal one, but uh, I do understand the pricing can sometimes be an issue. So I am simply stressing that if you have not tried flying a helicopter in simulation using an actual collective, give it a shot. And I'm right there with you guys. For those of you who use just a standard HOTAS with throttle, I used one for years uh, just using it. And But uh, there is a massive change in the immersive of experience when you move to a collective configuration it is significant another little tip i'll give you guys that i saw somebody do on a reddit post uh, was actually took a throttle and found a way to mount it vertically uh, basically he was able to rotate the plate that the throttle sits on so it sits vertically and then that way when he flies a helicopter he gets a similar experience to that of a collective still not quite the same kind of throw but certainly on the right track and it helps sort of train your mind on how a helicopter operates so just a little tip there so stay tuned for more information on the Exonos MI2. Hopefully we'll get some more information soon, but uh, we'll be following this one pretty closely. Next up on the list, Bravo Airspace has announced their 787-8 is coming to Microsoft Flight Simulator Marketplace for both PC and Xbox, and it should be released this week. The Boeing 787 is a custom rendition of the aircraft. However, it still requires the premium deluxe version of Microsoft Flight Simulator to use it, which means it's using the base version of the aircraft as a platform. Now, the really cool thing about this is that it still brings custom sound effects for both of the types of aircraft that are in, which are both the General Electric and the Rolls-Royce engines, um, are available in the simulator. Now, the really cool thing as well is that it is only $18.99 for the aircraft. They have also stated that the flight dynamics have been adjusted for this aircraft to support what would be expected in a real Boeing 787-8. Now, I obviously have unfortunately never had the esteemed pleasure of flying in the 787, much less the Dash 8, so I can't speak to that, but... Um, anytime that I see any of these kind of upgrades, I'm always really optimistic for them because any enhancement is an enhancement that's welcomed as long as, again, it is on par. 
The 787 is a very nice long haul aircraft. The Dash 8, I believe, is the most commonly used of the aircraft, with the Dash 9 being the least popular because of its massive size. So the Dash 8, you have the Dash 7, Dash 8, and Dash 9, and Dash 10, if I remember correctly, uh, which is the default version in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So the Dash 8 is going to give you a bit more uh, leeway as far as more realistic flights that you could take without having to necessarily be in the aircraft for hours on end in order to keep it realistic. Um, but that's the beautiful part about simulation. You can really fly wherever the hell you want. So kudos there. But it looks like they've done a very, very nice job with the aircraft. Again, custom sounds are integrated um, as well as some new texturing and modeling. One of the uh, better parts about it is, again, it is supported on both PC and Xbox and can be found in the Microsoft Marketplace for $18.99 upon release. Next up, let's talk about AnyBuild's A320 version 2. Now, I'm not one to really talk about the A320s anymore just because we had such a massive influx for so long. A320, A320, A320. But this is a bit of a different scenario. First off, AnyBuilds does an absolutely wonderful job with their aircraft, not to shoot down any other developers. That's not how that comment was intended. Just simply saying that AnyBuilds obviously catches my attention. So with Sim Update 15, um, the A320 version 2 by AnyBuilds was released, but there's two different variants of it, and if you want the most out of it for PC, you're going to want to pay attention here. So first off, with the Xbox. Um, Xbox simmers obviously are a bit more limited as far as uh, physical resources on the hardware itself, and therefore certain things have to be either foregone or dumbed down if you were scaled down, if you will, and so you can't quite get the full experience that you can with the power of a PC. So, any builds in order to combat this particular scenario went ahead and created what they have called the Enhancement Pack. Now, this is a free download, but you have to grab it from the marketplace. The aircraft itself is installed automatically when Sim Update 15 was installed onto your version of Microsoft Flight Simulator. However, if you want the Enhancement Pack, which those of you on PC, and if you have a good strong PC, you're going to want that, you're going to want to go over to the marketplace and find the Enhancement Pack for this particular aircraft. Now, what does the Enhancement Pack actually bring? The Enhancement Pack brings a fully modeled, high 3D detailed uh, cabin, as you guys can see here, as well as um, increases things such as, uh, gosh, I can't think, say, sorry guys, wings, ground spoilers, the engines, the cockpit, realistic sounds, the fly-by-wire system is a uh, fully modeled uh, according to the real aircraft, you have better ground handling, a smoother autopilot system, and other things that were brought in for the PC version to further enhance it. As well as you guys can see here, if you take a look at the texturing, the texturing is in 4K with the enhancement pack. Uh, again, a lot of these things are scaled down with the Xbox version and not quite as feature rich with the Xbox version due to a limitation in resources that are provided from the Xbox. Uh, that is one of the downsides to console, which is why I have always stuck to PC. The nice thing about PC is if you find that something isn't powerful enough, you go out and get one when you can. So. Um, the A320 V2 is still, I would say, I have flown it, guys, and it is absolutely fantastic. It is a major difference between that and the default version. Definitely very, very welcomed. My personal opinion would still stand on Fly-By-Wire or the Phoenix A320 as being the better of the two. Um, but... Again, you don't have to worry about updates, things like that. It's directly from the simulator. It comes with the standard eight liveries, the Orbix or the Orbit, the um, Aviations Club, things like that. I don't particularly care for those kind of liveries. I like to fly the more realistic wings, but, you know, that's totally neither here nor there when it comes to liveries. There's always going to be a ton of different liveries out there. Make sure you guys check out flightsim.to if there's one specific you're looking for. I guarantee it's out there. But again, one of the things that I'm really impressed with is here, like for example in this image we're looking at, is the overhead panel looks absolutely fantastic and all the texturing is gorgeous. Now the one thing that I will say about the AnyBuilds uh, variant versus, for example, that of the Flyby War of the Phoenix is the AnyBuilds looks like it is brand new off the line in my opinion. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. Some people prefer that nice clean cockpit, acting like they just got a brand new Lamborghini and that's totally, totally great. Uh, definitely has a purpose on both sides. So. You've got a couple different variants. Uh, the other thing about the version 2 is it is not a replacement to the original A320 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. It is a uh, installed side-by-side. -side. So essentially, you have quite a few different variants of the A320 available. The first ones coming out to line again would be the Phoenix, the Fly-By-Wire, the Default, and now the version 2 from AnyBuilds. And I think there's also what the one from Latin VFR. So there's quite a few A320s for you guys to choose from. 
but this was a definitely a nice update. It is a free update, and that's why I wanted to make sure that everyone knew it was available because if you don't go to the marketplace and get it and you're on PC, you're missing out on the full features that are available with it. So let's move on to the last. All right, so we are once again back with Pimax. Now, I'm, I always start any Pimax video with the same statement, you guys. I am a Pimax fanboy, and that is because I have been a Pimax user ever since their initial release uh, quite a few years ago. I have purchased and owned every single variant of the Pimax. The Crystal was the first one that was ever provided to me by Pimax themselves, which I am incredibly grateful for. We should be receiving the light here soon, so I can do a review of that for you guys as well. Um, so, yes, I'm a fanboy, but there is a reason why. The reason why is because I find that their product is extremely well done. Um, even with uh, some of their development, I have said on multiple occasions that uh, sometimes they release things a little too soon. and It can be a headache, but once you get things working, they're amazing VR headsets. So with that in mind, let's go on and talk about what they've done here today. So they are definitely top end, guys. They're top tier. Uh, the crystal comes in right around fifteen hundred U.S. dollars, so it's definitely not cheap. But what they are doing, keep in mind that the crystal light is uh, now on uh, sale, and so you guys can take that up. So first, talk about why that's significant. For those of you who don't know, the Crystal Light has uh, the same display, a lot of the same features as the Crystal, but it doesn't have the um, battery pack in it. It doesn't have some of the eye tracking features in it. There are a few different variants that you're going to want to make sure you pay attention to on their website, and it's significantly cheaper. It brings that price down by half. Okay, and that's important for this next part. So you can pick up a Crystal Light for right around 700 US dollars. Again, that's about half of what the standard Crystal is. So that's pretty awesome. Now, why is this significant? Because of what they are doing. They are doing a trial payment, final payment program that they are starting here. Okay, so now how this is going to work here is that you get to try the uh, whatever variant of the Pimax that you want, essentially, is you, you pay... The bulk of the price, I think, is whatever the price is, minus $200, okay? And to me, this is fair, so bear with me. So if we were talking about the Crystal Light, you'd be looking about 500 US out of pocket, all right? Pimax is going to give you 15 days from the date that you have received it. Not the date that is shipped, but the date that they have verified you have the Crystal in hand or whatever VR headset you choose from them, okay? Now, you do need to go through uh, the customer service agent in order to uh, arrange this whole process. But once you receive it, you get 15 days. You decide, hey, yep, I like it. Boom, 15 days later, that last $200 gets paid to Pimax. If you decide you don't want it, nope, this isn't working, it's not comfortable, doesn't work my glasses, I don't like it, whatever you decide to say, um, they say no problem, box it back up. They are going to pay for the return shipping. So you don't know, basically, let's just put it this way. There is no further cost out of pocket and you get your money back. They pay for the shipping to have it returned. Once they verified receipt of the unit, um, you get your money back. So keep that in mind. That is a pretty slick program and I haven't heard of anyone else doing this. This is significant because Pimax products can be so very expensive. They are absolutely uh, the most expensive on the market for the general consumer. Uh, Varro, obviously, with their latest, that shoots at a whole new ball game. I think that's right around three thousand dollars for their newest release. So, uh, but they are not what I would call general consumer market. Pimax is also, in my opinion, the best in the market. Even with some of the headaches in the software and the development and as things come to be, um, they are also, in my opinion, the most innovative in the market. With their different faceplates, you have the option of whether you want inside-out tracking or you want to use base station tracking. They're also working on the mixed reality faceplate, so that's going to be a big thing. They are jumping on board with mixed reality, which is obviously huge and going to be very, very significant as it continues to develop. For those of you who don't understand the difference, mixed reality basically takes whatever your physical physical hardware is, your desk, etc., all of your cockpit controls that you have purchased, you get to create a separated environment where you can still see all of your physical hardware through the inside out cameras, as well as everything else that you look at is in the 3D world. So you can actually set yourself up with a really slick cockpit. Really, really awesome stuff. So we'll get into that in a later video, but Pimax is working on that as well. So this 15-day trial period really offers a great opportunity for you guys to de decide if Pimax is the route that you want to go. The other considerations to take when it comes to Pimax is that, yes, most of their units require a pretty significant uh, computer. Um, now, I run a 3900 XT from AMD, a Ryzen 9 3900 XT, so a couple years is definitely aging, and an RTX 4080, and I do pretty darn well with the Crystal. Um, 
not as much as a 4090 would or a faster processor. Usually I'm limited by the processor to give you guys sort of a baseline to think about. Um, and all of my hardware specs are down in the description below if you guys want to check that out. Now, as far as limitations, if you are in the US, the UK, Australia, New Zealand, as well as uh, countries within the European Union, this option is open for you. So make sure you guys check that out. Finally, Pimax is joining a or uh, putting on a road show, a road show that's going to take them all the way through London, Germany, New York, Washington, D.C., as well as they are going to be at the Flight Sim Expo in Las Vegas. If you guys have not registered for the expo and you guys are interested, I highly suggest you do that. There's a link down in my description uh, that will take you to the registration. Use the overkill code and you guys can uh, enjoy that. Anyway, so make sure that you guys check that out. The Global Roadshow 2024 is what Pimax is calling it, and it can be more information on that can be found on their website. As always, folks, I hope you found this video useful and entertaining. Stay safe and healthy. I'll see you in the next one.